So if you are anywhere on TikTok or social media, you have seen the fact that lots of women are being punched in the face or have been punched in the face. And it seems like it has been a coordinated um, a coordinated incident. It was all in the same area. So I'm wondering if Encelosauruses are getting together and just targeting women that are on their phone or something. But this one, um, this article, um, I think this was NBC News said, multiple women online say were, they were punched in the face while walking around New York City. All right, let's check out this article. Several women have come forward on social media sharing their incidents in which they said they were punched by men while they walk, while they were walking down the streets in downtown Manhattan in broad daylight last month. Multiple videos, which were uploaded to TikTok, have picked up traction in the last week, with women online sharing their safety concerns in comments and reply videos. One woman says she was assaulted walking home from class. Another says she was assaulted on her way to work. A third woman says she was attacked walking her dog. Um, and they are describing uh, people with similar characteristics. New York police say they made an arrest in one, one of the incidents and are investigating another, while police wouldn't confirm that the incidents described in the TikTok videos are those they are investigating. They share they are looking into cases that are very similar to accounts posted on social media. Officials said it's unclear whether the two incidences that they are investigating are connected. The videos have circulated amid widespread perceptions in the U.S. that crime is rising, despite recent FBI data suggests that it decreased last year. Concerns over public safety have continued to loom in New York City. A series of recent high-profile crimes in the subway system prompted Governor Kathy Holcomb to send the National Guard um, out to some of the busiest stations. In February, police reported a decrease in shootings, unalivings, and other crimes like grand larceny as opposed to February of last year. However, there was an, a 3.6% uptick in felony assault with 1,900 incidents reported to police last month, according to crime statistics for the past week. Misdemeanor assault is up 10% from this time last year and has gone up over 15% in the past two years. A police spokesman declined to answer any additional questions about the recent assault incidents, including whether they represent an uptick in violent crime against women in the city or whether the police department is taking any additional measures to ensure their safety. Like I said, it's all up and down. Um, TikTok, these women are saying things like they were looking down at their phone and then they all of a sudden got punched. Um, and since this all seemed to happen around the same time, it seems to me that somebody is, or somebody's plural, are putting things together and like making a game of that. But that's what it seems to me. Y'all jump in the comments and let me know if you have any theories as to what is going on. Punching women in the face in New York City. And from the videos I've seen, it's all in the same area, Manhattan and Times Square. There's a few theories going around. One, that this is like an incel group activity that they orchestrated. Two, it's one mentally ill homeless guy. One of the victims posted this. You can literally hear me sobbing here, but I tried to get a clear video. I was determined to get this so I can file a police report. So this is a thin black man, average height, with a red jacket. This is another victim's video, and we have another black man, but it doesn't look like the same man to me. This guy looks like he's balding and he's short. Then we have this gentleman who says his girlfriend was assaulted a few months ago by this guy. This terrifying comment kind of confirms some of our theories that this is orchestrated. This person comments, this is called chick picking. There is a Discord server where people post where they see girls walking, and first to get a video punching wins $50. Thousands are playing. Then we have this message to one of the victims saying, I'm just letting you know two dudes specifically paid a homeless black guy to punch pretty girls in the face. One is allegedly an incel named Matthew. He has blue eyes and he allegedly goes to a school called the New School. And the other guy is allegedly named Benjamin and he has green eyes. Don't ask me how I know this. All I know is that these two incels are going too far with this. They both allegedly live in lower Manhattan and they are allegedly in college paying homeless men to punch girls that have rejected them. They are loudly laughing about it on Discord. This is absolutely just somebody has been. All right, let's get into some of this news of the day. I'm sure you guys have seen um, this Baltimore bridge collapse and what is going on as far as the DEI people and the anti-DEI people. Um, I'm sure you've seen the conservatives talking about didn't earn it. 
um, basically saying that any of these black people, these non-white people or non-men getting into positions didn't earn it. Let's get into this article from Forbes. Around 1.30 a.m. on Tuesday, March 26, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapsed after a cargo ship collided into the bridge. The bridge collapse was caught on video where viewers could see a total blackout on the ship. Maryland Governor Wes Moore declared a state of emergency following the collapse. Details about what caused the collision are still being pieced together. Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott spoke with the press about what an unthinkable and unspeakable tragedy the incident was. Amidst the horrific news of the bridge collapse, some chose to focus on Mayor Scott's age and race and proceeded to blame DEI for the bridge collapse. Utah State Representative Phil Lyman, along with Florida con congressional candidate Anthony S uh, Sabatini, were among those blaming the incident on DEI. One ex-user tweeted that Mayor Scott was Baltimore's DEI mayor, with that tweet garnering nearly 6,000 reposts at the time of this article, while another user tweeted that the mayor looks like a teen. The creator behind The Darkest Hue, a platform created as a safe space for dark-skinned Black girls, women, and femmes, wrote on an Instagram post, it's becoming increasingly clear that DEI is used as a dog whistle for, for Black people, as if to substitute for racial slurs. DEI is a term that has become increasingly more polarizing, an acronym created to highlight the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion has been warped and distorted by DEI critics, the same way that terms like woke and critical race theory have been hijacked, morphed, and mutilated. The term DEI is experiencing a similar fate. There is an increasing phenomenon where individuals who have very little understanding of DEI are critiquing its utility and effectiveness. Those who understand the value of DEI and recognize how it can be a tool to fight against oppression and injustice can counteract the anti-DEI sentiment in a few ways. Number one, number, numbers don't lie. One popular DEI myth is that it promotes the hiring of unqualified non-white job candidates. But what does the data say? Looking specifically at different industries will reveal prevalent racial disparities. If DEI was increasing the representation of non-white candidates, this would be reflected in the numbers, but many industries like the media and AI remain overwhelmingly white. The data will expose the anti-DEI myths for, for what they are, so those fighting DEI propaganda should lean on the data to combat DEI misinformation. Number two, highlight DEI progress thus far. Many people think DEI is a failure because the changes aren't always monumental or tangible. It's important to highlight progress no matter how small, whether it's the creation of company practices or equity-driven government policies. In the U.S., incremental progress can be seen in the different policies that have been created to drive more equity, including maternal health interventions aimed at improving maternal health outcomes and apprenticeships designed to train and employ truck drivers from underrepresented communities. Within some organizations, the, the unaliving of George Floyd spearheaded the creation of DEI councils and committees, as well as employee research groups, um, resource groups. These groups can be used as a catalyst for positive workplace culture shifts. Number three, find your community. Despite the virility and um, reach of many anti-DEI voices, there is a large community of individuals determined to see a world that prioritizes DEI and justice. Those who are proponents of DEI cannot be deterred by the detractors, much to the chagrin of DEI critics. There are still many organizations and institutions willing to invest in and prioritize DEI. Finding ways to be in community with DEI advocates can reinvigorate those who are passionate about DEI work, but who may have lost hope or are losing hope due to the growing anti-DEI noise. It's important to remember the words of famed writer and activist Ard Audre Lorde, without community, there is no liberation, only the most vulnerable and temporary armistice between an individual and her oppression. Now, if you just wade into the cluster F of Twitter or X, you'll see all of the anti-DEI people. And those are just the same type of people that would be um, against affirmative action, acting like Black people or just non-white people are unworthy of these positions, as if I, 
as a black woman can just go up and decide that I'm going to be a contractor or that I can fly a plane like I wouldn't have to pass these same tests to be um, whatever these positions are. They're really acting like that. And, you know, it, it's just highlighting their, their, their racism. That's basically that. So I, I was about to show some of the screenshots, but we see enough of their racism on a daily basis. So I'm going to leave this one at that. Okay, for my next news story, former speaker um, Paul Ryan has a stark prediction for down ballot Republicans on Trump. Former House Speaker Paul Ryan has warned of the negative effect that presumptive GOP 2024 nominee Donald Trump will have on down ballot Republican candidates. I think we're going to lose more seats than we would with Trump because there are just too many suburban swing voters that just don't like him. Therefore, vote um, against Republicans, Ryan said in an interview with the Southern Baptist University study on the on the daily campus on Tuesday. Former GOP hopeful Nikki Haley, who dropped out of the Republican primary race after Super Tuesday, would have been a more unifying presidential candidate, he suggested. Ryan said he didn't subscribe to the nationalist populism of Trump, which is where the bulk of Republicans are right now, and also called the current GOP a cult of personality tied to Trump rather than based on a set of principles. I agree with that. <laughs> We're going to see how this works out for them, though. Ryan was a fierce critic of Trump before his surprise 2016 election win over the Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton. As House Speaker, Ryan worked with the then president and passed major tax cut before announcing his retirement from Congress in 2018 and joining the board of Fox Corporation. It is going to be very interesting to see how um, the Republicans up and down the ticket fare um, with this election coming up in November. Next news story, ex-Worthington Christian coach accused of SE actual relationship with, play with player, and he's accused of making videos of this. A former Worthington Christian High School women's basketball coach was arrested in North Carolina after being accused of being in a SE actual relationship with a minor player. Charging documents filed by a Columbus police detective on March 21st, 2024, said a former player told him that she was in a relationship with her coach, Jason Dawson, from 2019 to 2023. The victim said their relationship became SE actual when she was 16 years old in 2021 and that Dawson had SEX with her approximately 100 times. She also said Dawson took videos during SEX and sent them to her. The detective wrote that CPD's forensic unit was able to extract at least three videos from her phone, showing them having SEX when she was 17. This is the first time we've heard of any of these allegations of criminal activity about this former employee, head of school, Dr. Mark Hay said in a statement on Wednesday, the behavior described in these reports is despicable, criminal, and against everything we stand for and teach. That's why we're committed to providing our full cooperation with law enforcement to bring this former employee to justice. SE actual assault is never acceptable, and we will not stand for it. Dawson is charged with one count of pandering SE actually oriented matter involving a minor and two counts of SE actual battery. He was arrested in North Carolina and, and is being held in the Mecklenburg County Jail. Hired in 2014 after graduating from school um, from the school in 2006, Dawson resigned in 2022 after two incidents of employment discipline that were not related to the actions alleged by police, Hay said. Dawson passed an FBI background check and an Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation background check per policy. The head of school also said no student, parent, or anyone else reported any alleged criminal activities regarding Dawson. So that is a several um, news stories that have absolutely no relation, but I think that um, you guys might be interested. So jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.